We have a 2007 Audi RS4. We replace the front struts. Now we're going to show you how to refill the DR6 system, the dynamic ride control system. First, take the wheels off, raise the car, take both wheels on that side where you were doing some work. Yeah, here's our new shocks installed. Here we have the connectors for charging the dynamic ride control system. This is the front. Uh, you could probably get to it without removing the wheel, but as if you were doing some work to suspension, your wheel is probably going to be off anyways. The shocks come empty from the factory, so do not put them in and drive it. You will damage the shocks by driving with empty shocks, as well as the system. As right is going to be very, very stiff and bouncy. If you see, well, there's a rip over here, but you have to take this bolt off in order to get to the rear fitting for the for the rear truck. Make sure the fittings are clean and nice. If you're doing any work on RS6s, RS4s, or RS7s with the dynamic ride control suspensions, before you take anything apart, make sure you evacuate all the fluid. The fluid is in, under pressure in the system, so you could actually injure yourself. If you're going to try to take one of the lines off, it's under high pressure. So make sure you discharge the system correctly before doing any work to these cars. Here's our DRC system refill kit. We have the shock fluid. Make sure you check the fluid by the part number with the VIN number from your car at the dealership. Fill up the new fluid container. There's a line on the cylinder right up to the line. Close the cap. Now we have these two fittings for the actual suspension on the car. Connect, connect those. Like I mentioned before, make sure the fittings on the car are clean of any debris. You don't want any dust or dirt getting in there. They quick connect, quick disconnect fittings. So it's easy to connect them. Close off all the valves. First you need to bleed the actual sealing device. Connect the air hose to the... This is the old fluid container. And we gotta bleed the actual machine. See, we have to open this valve over here. And then briefly open this one over here. And make sure there is no air going through, the, through this line right here between the new fluid container and the pump. Air to the, to the machine and open this valve over here. And look at the release hose. You will be able to see old fluid leaking out. You have, you're gonna have to wait probably several minutes for it to evacuate the whole system. Uh, our system is empty as we change the shocks in the front, so we're going to be just creating vacuum in the system. Like, see, it's got a little, there are little drops of uh, oil coming out, so we're just going to wait for it to create enough vacuum in the system, and then we're going to shut off this valve and see if the system is leaking or not. It's probably going to take. I don't know, five, ten minutes for it to be vacuuming out the fluid or the, the air out of the system. And then we're gonna close this valve off and watch on the on the vacuum over here. It's gotta be almost almost at negative one bar. 
for it to be proper vacuum before you can start sealing the system. So we have enough vacuum in the system now. Now we're gonna wait a couple of minutes to see if the vacuum is dropping. If the vacuum is dropping, you got a problem, you got a leak somewhere. So watch in the vacuum. Alright, so we've been waiting for a couple of minutes. Our vacuum doesn't drop. That means the system should be alright. Now we're gonna open this needle valve over here to allow the fluid in, into the vacuumed out system. I'm gonna open it a couple of turns and wait to see the pressure drop. The fluid is not going in anymore. I'm gonna close this valve, open this one over here, and start pumping. And we gotta pump it up to about 22 bar. Probably gonna take quite a bit of time. You gotta watch your watch your fluid, the new fluid container. Make sure you have fluid in there. Do not let it dry, run dry. Top off the fluid once it gets full, and keep on pumping until you see 22 bar. Like you see our pressure is going up little by little. If your system is completely empty, it's probably gonna take around two and a half to three bottles of fluid for you to fill it up. Make sure you don't have any leaks. So we ran right at 22 bar. We close off the this valve over here. Let it sit for a couple of seconds. So if you cannot reach 22 psi, you either have a leak somewhere or one of the pistons is, is gone bad. So you're gonna need to address that. So now we got her at 22 psi, and we gotta let some pressure off and keep it at 16. Sorry, not PSI, the bar. To let the pressure off, open this valve B over here. Slightly. And wait for it to get to 16. The system pressure that you pumped up, when you're done pumping it up, has to stay at 16 bar. There you go, we got it at 16 bar. Now the pressure could go up just a bit, so let some more out. Make sure it stays at 16 bar. Yep. That's it. Charging of the system is complete. Now I could disconnect the connectors of the car. A quick disconnect so you won't have any problems with it. And do the other side if you did any work to the other side. Make sure you close off the caps. Make sure you didn't put any dirt in there.
once again, see what we're doing the other side. We're vacuuming it out, see we have fluid going through. I think this, the left side on this car has a problem. We're gonna address that in a little bit. See, there's a lot more fluid coming out of the right side, even though we disconnected the front strut. I think either somebody let the fluid out of this side or there's a problem with that. And we also noticed the same thing when we were working on the car. When we were taking the shots off and releasing the pressure, there was no pressure on the left side. So definitely there is a problem. Problem with the sound of the pistons in the, in the control system. We're just gonna wait for it to get as much fluid out of there as possible. Want to get all of it out, but most likely some of it is still gonna stay in there. So we're waiting for it to come out. <coughs> Alright, we're not really getting anything through anymore. We're gonna close the system off, disconnect the air hose, and wait for 5-10 minutes to see if the vacuum is gonna be dropping. This side seems to be much better than the left side. I think the left side either had a leaking shock for a very long time or there is a problem in the control system. So we're gonna double check that later. Uh, right side is evacuated. So we have the vacuum standing still. We're gonna wait for 5-10 minutes and start refilling it. Alright, so we waited a bit. So good, it's not leaking. I'm gonna let some fluid in. Yeah, that's it, the vacuum is dropped. Close this valve, open the, the other valve up, and start pumping fluid in. Just like the other side, watching the fluid level, make sure it doesn't go dry. Or you're gonna have to redo the whole procedure again. Same thing, you have to pump it up to 22 bar. <coughs> yep, it's right there. Gotta let it sit for a couple of minutes and then let some pressure out. Alright, so we had it sitting for about five minutes. Now we're gonna release this pressure until it's gonna be around. 16 bar. Gonna open this needle valve and drop some of that pressure. That's it. The charging of DRC system is complete. Now we could disconnect the lines. Put the caps back on. And take the test drive. There we go. Last time I checked, Dealers will charge you around six hours of labor to refill your DRC system. We'll do it a lot cheaper than that. Um, as you see, the whole procedure takes around half an hour, most an hour. It's nothing special about it. You could do it yourself as long as you have a tool. The only problem is this tool is about 2,000 hours. So, here you go. That's how you refill your DRC system.